I am not a chef. I have no culinary skill. I learned how to bring people together through food and I've been doing that for a very long time. I was always a business owner. <laughs> not the one on paper, but I was always a business owner. Um, I used to sell frozen cups where you freeze the juice in the foam cup and then you sell it. People knock on the door, I used to sell that. Um, outside of the parties, I used to sell uh, McChickens. I would go to McDonald's and buy McChickens for a dollar and come back and sell them for two dollars. I would sell anything that I could because I'm like, I'm a hustler and they used to call me Hustle Man because I literally would find ways to create things that people needed. And when I realized that I can create a need for people and they could, I could be their supplier, I knew that there was a big win for me. And then I got a mouthpiece out of this world, so I could get people to buy anything that I'm selling. And it always worked as a kid. I was born and raised in Baltimore, Maryland. My father, the day that I was born, he was being sentenced to 30 plus years in prison. So I grew up in a household with my mother and my siblings and she worked every day. She was a workaholic, maybe that's where I get it from. But she worked at McDonald's, she was on payroll. She's a lead singer of a reggae band and I saw that my mother really never rested. But she always made sure that we had what we needed, not always what we wanted. So I learned how to be a hustler and not beg anybody for anything and always get it on my own because I saw how hard my mother worked. My father was also an entrepreneur, just wasn't a legal one and he literally did what he could to provide a way for his family as well. So I've always been in that entrepreneurial world. Growing up, I used to sell candy, food, everything you could think of because I just had that itch. Um, I was 14 having high school parties and I can remember calling rec centers and facilities acting like an adult so that I could secure the venue to have parties. And I used to bring out a thousand people every single week that would come to my parties. And I remember counting like $4,000 on the floor with my mother every other week. And that was something that I've never seen before because here I am, I'm a teenager. I'm just getting out of my preteens. And my mother helping me to count money, making more than my mother at a young age. And I realized that entrepreneurial life is the life that I need to live and the rest is in history. As a Jamaican, food was always big. I laugh about eating rice and peas every single day of the week. Um, but I always had a home cooked meal. And although my mother was at home all of the time because she was working, uh, my grandmother was in the house, so she taught me how to cook. Um, she was a baker, I didn't get that part down. But she was just the person that just taught me how to make flavor taste good. And I learned so much from her. Um, and I grew up in a household with a mother who was a vegetarian, so I grew up just eating fish. So after I graduated college, I got into TV and I was really good at it. And it afforded me the opportunity to move to New York City, where I became a producer on a few shows, saved up my 401k and I opened up my first restaurant. It was called Pinky's Jamaican and American Restaurant. And the restaurant did seemingly well, had lines down the block, but unfortunately, fortunately and unfortunately, I lost that restaurant to a grease fire, but I'm glad it happened because what it did is it took me out of that restaurant so that I can focus on other things. I was only supposed to come to Atlanta for three months. And when I came to Atlanta, that's when I came up with Slutty Vegan. And that slutty vegan concept literally started in my bedroom, my two bedroom apartment in Atlanta. And after I came up with that concept, I had no idea that it would turn into a hundred million dollar brand. I hired like three chefs to come to my house to make food. The original concept was supposed to be called the Jackfruit Cafe. I was gonna make everything with jackfruit. And then the chef came to my house and it was disgusting. And I'm like, okay, well, I can't do this. So what am I going to do? So I was working with uh, the shared kitchen and they recommended me a company called Impossible. And they said that th there's this new company called Impossible Foods. They make um, vegan burgers. They taste really good. Do you want to sample it? I'm like, sure. So I tasted the burger and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so good. I'm going to make burgers and fries. I made the sauce from scratch. I was just playing, throwing stuff in a bowl, mixing it. And I made like a Thousand Island kind of dressing from scratch. And then I made a fry seasoning from scratch, just throwing stuff together in a bowl. And I came up with the recipes and I put them on this burger. I'm not even a chef, I just like to eat. And it worked. And not only did it work in a major way, like people from around the world go crazy about our secret sauce. 
People from around the world go crazy about our fry seasoning. You don't have to be an expert. You don't have to be somebody who's doing it for years. As long as you got a creative hand and a creative mind, you literally can make something so spectacular that people crave every single day. But I realized that we created a phenomenon. We created something that people had an appetite for, and I'm not talking about the food. People wanted to be a part of this movement. And that movement allowed me the opportunity to open up my first brick and mortar. That dream afforded me the opportunity to open up additional locations and to eventually raise $25 million to be able to scale and grow my business. So all of these things we've been doing in a grassroots way to grow this company. And now here we are on our way to be a billion dollar brand. I used to just be that person like, oh, I want to do this idea, but I don't have the resources. I don't have the information now. It ain't nothing that I can't do. So when you ask me, when do I know I'm going to make it? I don't know. I'm just doing the work and just having fun while I'm doing it.